Alberto, first to you. Good morning. The headline yesterday in that German newspaper, the plan B that could come about this weekend, do we face the prospect of the Cyprus playbook being reached for? Definitely. I mean, this is a scenario. I still think there is a chance of a last-minute agreement. Uh, it makes sense rationally, but the Greek government is digging their heels in very strongly. If they miss the payment at the end of June, the IMF payment, you would have a grace period. You would probably have capital controls or a bank holiday. Now, the problem is the end of June is very close to the next payment uh, on the 20th of July, and that's a payment to the ECB and other central banks. Now, that payment is a lot more important. You know, you can have a one month or two month grace period missing an IMF payment, but if you miss the ECB payment, that means the emergency liquidity to the Greek banks would be frozen. And that means very likely you're in a situation where you may have to issue a parallel currency, IOUs, like California did years yeah. ago. So that is a step closer to an exit scenario. Obviously, you know, we have still time to avoid that, but we are getting close to the point of no return. Lucy, for you, I mean, this is the world of politics. This is Greece's reality. Here you are trying to manage some equities, and you can have a stock, a company, with no exposure to Greece in terms of revenue, no operations in Athens at all, yet it sells off and it sells off hard on tension in Athens. How on earth do you manage that kind of situation? Well, that's what we're, we're hoping for, in fact, because, as, as you know, we have raised a bit of, of liquidity um, on concerns about Brexit a couple of months ago. And so these will be opportunities for us um, when we get sell, uh, selling off, particularly in, in Europe. Um, but it could obviously, you could have um, yields rising further than they are at the moment, certainly in, in Italy and Spain. You know, it could get worse before it gets better. But I think that's the way that we are thinking that these should be opportunities for us. For you, though, you look at spreads widen. Look at the spread between Italy and Spain. Yep. That started to change fundamentally as well. But ultimately, as I look at bunds that seem to remain anchored in this bad of risk aversion, where do we go from here in Germany? I mean, look, the ECB has done a lot with QE, and now all of this is being undone. So there is a point where the ECB will care, even though at the last press conference, Draghi acted really cool on inflation, and, and the same for the vice president, Constancio. Uh, to some extent, the rising yield is positive because it shows that inflation expectations are rising yeah. and QE is working. But if you make 10-year BTPs or 10-year Spanish bonds rise to the average level of funding for the government, then you're basically undoing QEs. Mm. If the government in Spain and Italy is going to pay more to fund itself than it was paying on average, then basically they can spend less. So you're, you're having a fiscal tightening, an involuntary tightening. So at some point, ECB has to care. We're not very far from that. So when is it? Because ECB official Benoit Coré speaking in a speech the other week, he said, I don't want to give the market a free pass. We don't want to address the volatility. I understand that. But at some point, they have to care. We're at 2.5% on a Spanish 10-year. Where is it? 3%, 4%? 3, 3.5%, three, the point where you're basically funding at your average cost, so you don't save any more money, on, depending on the country. Now, even though... I have to say, even at these levels, high volatility can still uh, hinder spending, hinder investment, make CFOs a lot more concerned about investment, make banks a lot more concerned. So you're already having a bit of uh, monetary tightening. And banks that were lending in January and February are now cutting their, their loans again. So this was making the ECB very comfortable. They were saying, okay, there's volatility in markets, but banks are lending. Now banks are not lending anymore. Lucy, for you, this good news... For the bond market, it means high yields. Mm. For the equity market, well, that means a sell-off because these two asset classes are so highly correlated right now. When does that correlation break down so that good news is good news for equities? Well, so far, we've seen the volatility very much in currency markets and then going into the bond markets. But it really hasn't hit the equity markets until very recently. And so that, I think, is, shows that there is a little bit more of a valuation buffer in equity markets. Um, and that the, the real causes of concern are not within the corporate sector. So that, I think, has been a help so far. I, don't, I think we're now due for a little bit more volatility coming into equities as we see at the moment. Uh, so I don't think it'll break down, but I think there may be a little bit more support within equities. In terms of your stock-specific selection, we're back to a February high on the stock 600. When you look at equities right now, do you try and seek out the low beta stocks or do you just sit here? Try and gauge what the future earnings stream looks like and brace yourself and sit through it? I think the, the, the thing we really have to do is, is get some, some clarity about um, the underlying performance of the business, which is 
which is being masked a little bit by this currency volatility. And that's the thing I think we've, we've sort of spoken about, about just seeing where the, the business is you know, fundamentally being affected by the exchange rate volatility or whether this is just reporting. And if it is just reporting, then those are good opportunities and those are things that we've been looking for. But it really does mean looking with the company to understand exactly how their business is working. And some of the companies themselves are just really learning because they haven't seen this level of, of um, FX volatility for a while. Have you pinpointed any of the companies that do look good on that basis? Well, some of the consumer companies look interesting on, the, on that basis. So you know, Adidas is one, Ralph Lauren is another, which have both seen quite big um, impacts. But also it, they've been affected by, by travel because consumers themselves are affected by exchange rates. So there's a sort of double impact going on. So I think looking through that with the companies themselves is something that we've been doing a lot of. Lucy McDonald, Chief Investment Officer at Allianz Global Investors, Alberto Gallo of RBS.